What's up, freaks? Live here from the road on the way to Vegas for a project meetup. We have a couple of these meetups per year. Something we're going to talk about here is the brotherhood, the project brotherhood, and just brotherhood and finding your people, finding your tribe. A couple of things I want to talk about in this, this live video. I like to do a quick one of these videos every time I'm driving out to Vegas. About a three and a half hour drive when I head out to Vegas. So always like to hop on here live on part of the way. We're going to get into that in a second. Today I want to talk about doing just that, weaponizing, weaponizing your travel when you're when you're on the road, when you're traveling. Also on the project and the brotherhood and how to find your brother, how to find your people, how to find your like-minded freaks, like-minded savage servants like we do in the project, like we're going to do a meetup right now. On top of that, we're going to talk about not giving a fuck about what people think or do or say the people that don't give a fuck at least we're gonna go a deep dive into that as there's been a lot of whiny little bitch haters on the internet lately about the project and about the military we're gonna talk about the military also we're talking about military service i'd like to get your thoughts on it what's up plot freak show police officer project i hope you're gonna be here in vegas i'll see you here in a little while about an hour out from vegas for the project meetup then also but on that note of haters, how do we even weaponize? How to weaponize the bitch ass haters that are out there? How to weaponize your travel? How to not give a shit? And how to find that tribe? How to find that group? That that those they're your people, your freaks, your like minded freaks. So let's get into. It. Let's start with the project and the brotherhood. So first off, I'm on the on the way to the to the Las Vegas for the project meetup, which. A lot of people don't know it's about the project, but once you once you graduate the project, or I should say if you graduate the project, and that's a big motherfucking if, if you graduate the project, you literally become part of this ongoing, lifelong brotherhood of just hungry, successful, motivated, like-minded, kick-ass men of fucking fire from all over the country, from all over the world even. I think we have like seven or eight different countries, graduates from seven or eight different countries from all over the world from all different industries. And we literally have connections on a weekly, sometimes a lot of times even daily basis with each other, with the graduates, with the other instructors, just nonstop connections, nonstop networking, nonstop camaraderie, leveling up, fucking brotherhood. That's what goes on after the project. Now, in addition to, of course, like our, our private groups that we have or whatever and, and discussions and, and messages and whatever else and, and connecting on the phone and we have Zoom, some, each class has their own either monthly or weekly Zoom meeting and then we have larger get togethers. We have two major meetups per year, which is I'm on the way to Vegas right now to one of them. And I think we have, I don't even know, probably close to a hundred graduates from the first 13 classes coming in. We now have over 150 graduates. So this is a, it, this, this concept's already been proven. There's proof of concept here. It's not just a thought, not just an idea, not just a philosophy, not just some fucking people on the internet flapping their gums like most people out there talking about the shit they can do and will do. This is a, a already a proven concept. It's battle-tested, the project. And so heading out to Vegas for this major meetup that we have for the next two and a half, three days where we're gonna do some high-level business masterminding business networking, relationship building, of course, getting in some, some crazy training sessions together. I think we're doing paintballing this time. Last time we shot some machine guns over at Machine Guns Vegas. And this is a huge part of what the, this is really when it comes down to it. Probably the greatest portion of the investment of the project is the ongoing brotherhood. It's not like a mud run or a Spartan race where, what's up, Isaac? Hope we're gonna be out here in Vegas. It's not like a mud run or a Spartan race where you just get a high five a t-shirt and you're just on your way. It is the complete opposite. It's once you graduate the project, that's when the fucking work is starting. That's when the relationship starting. That's when the, the real changes and transformations are really kicking in. And that's what this, this meetup is all about. Keeping that fucking fire lit. There's no, there's no point in investing your time, your money, your energy, your emotion into something like any kind of personal development program or seminar, workshop, or 
people go to these these workshops for a weekend and they jump up and down and and scream and shout and dance and all this other stuff and high five and they do hug circles and all this other circle jerk stuff and by Monday by Tuesday that shit is worn off they're back falling into their same old habits their same fucking vices the same mediocrity the same level of playing down to the level of, of, of people around them and it was a fucking waste that's why we have these meetups a couple times a year and so this is the first meetup of the year of 20 or, or, or the first meetup of the year of 2022 and then we have one later in the year in September and that one is with the spouses included What's up, freaks? That's what the spouse included, where then the spouses get involved in it. And it, it's that's why I started the, the MDK Wives show on YouTube, if you've seen it. I have a show where I interview the graduates, and I'll be interviewing several graduates throughout the weekend here. But that's why I started the MDK Wives show, to hear even about the men who have gone through the pro- project, their wives' perspective, before, during, and what it's like now after. I've graduated, I, I've interviewed some of the wives that, whose husbands have graduated now, two, two and a half, almost three years ago and talking about what has been the lasting impact on not just their finances and their business, of course that's a huge one, but on their relationships on their family on their level of being a a role model and that's a huge part of what this brotherhood of the project is all about so much to the fact that I, I never had a tattoo in my life until I was 43 years ago 41 years old my first tattoo is right there, the project logo on top of my hand. That was the first fucking tattoo I ever got in my life because that's how much impact it's had on my life as an instructor and my family's life, even just as an instructor. And then what I've seen, the transformations and the growth that it's had on all the men that have come through and the lives it's changed and the lives it's saved and the role models that it's created and the fucking marriages that it's saved. Yeah, take that, that's how fucking deep it is. The rebirth of the men that have come through. And we're gonna go a little deeper into the project as this ties into the military topic we're gonna talk about and as it ties into the not giving a fuck about what people say around you or think around you or do around you, at least the people that don't fucking matter. So let's jump into it. So it looks, it seems as if there's a, a video that got out about uh, behind the scenes of the project and I'm, I'm yelling and I'm saying curse words, oh my God. And I broke a table, oh my God. The end of the fucking world. So for the whole weekend, I don't see most of them because my my assistant just deletes most of them. But she sends the more entertaining ones or the ones that actually can make good content to to address like we're doing right now. Which is why I said you can weaponize your fucking haters. Your haters are going to give you content. They're going to give you lessons to teach. Lessons, coaching opportunities for your people. Like, so keep the hate going. Like, and if you're not getting haters and you're not getting hate mail and hate messages and all this other bullshit like these fucking losers do on, on the internets, you're probably not being bold enough, probably not taking enough risk, probably not doing enough, probably not taking enough fucking action, because you just, guess what, you're never going to make everyone happy, and fuck it, that's what we're talking about when we say, find your people, find your tribe, find your brotherhood, find your like-minded freaks, that's what it's all about, so since this video was on there, it's literally a 10 second video, and it's, it's behind the scenes of the product, there's no context given, and guess what, I don't have to give any fucking context to it, I didn't even post it first of all, but I don't have to give context to it. That's the problem. People think they're entitled to stuff and then they will whine and bitch and you should see some of the messages that I get about this video. It's fucking comical. Like people have spent their time to edit it and take take screenshots and move all this stuff around and Photoshop and create these video highlight clips on a Saturday afternoon. A beautiful Saturday afternoon. Summer's coming. And then you wonder why you have a horrible relationship with your kids and and your wife. And you're fucking fat and out of shape. Because that's how you're spending your fucking weekends. Doing shit like that. Just being a straight up fucking hater. But anyway, we laugh at it. It's entertaining. It gives me something to talk about right here. And feel free to jump in the comments down below. Any questions or comments you want to put down there. We'll get into it if I can see them. I might might miss them because I am on the road. And I'm kind of paying attention to the road. As I'm just talking to you in this conversation. So there's, there's the message. You should see the message I'm getting. That I'm a horrible father. I'm... Uh, they don't like my shirt. I have an ugly shirt. My face is ugly. And I got I got made fun of for being skinny. I was told I was skinny. And two seconds later, another... It, it takes a lot to make me fucking smile and laugh on camera. This shit is so fucking comical. You're gonna... Might get a fucking laugh out of me. One person 
talk shit to me saying I was skinny. What's up, Mueller? I hope you're going to be out here in Vegas coming up about an hour out. I will see you soon, freak show. So one person talked shit about me saying, you're skinny. And two seconds later, someone else is saying, you're all roided up. So am I, I don't get it. Which one is it? Am I roided? Am I skinny? Did I get a bad batch and it didn't work? I'm not sure. I was a bit confused. A lot of them are confusing, but they are fucking comical. There was some... Some of those, you know, those pictures people create where it's, it's a picture of something and they put the text and the graphics and the writing and the sound and things popping up. Like, they put in some effort to their hating. It's, it's, it's impressive. I hope they're using that same time and a, uh, like Michelle Pfeiffer fucking obsessiveness into their own lives and relationships and businesses and, and their own, I don't know, the revenue of their job or their career or whatever business they're in. I hope they're putting that same attention to detail and same obsessiveness it's impressive some of them some of it's fucking impressive and comical too and comical on top of that but you should see some of the things that the message i'm getting that i'm gay that i'm a an f f a g uh all this other stuff off of these these videos off of this video 10 second clip with no context at all with no context given and i don't need to give fucking context to anything that's besides the point we're not that's not even the point of this it's a point that people jump on this bandwagon like little sheep and those are probably the same ones that'll talk shit to me because I'm not vaccinated or because I didn't like wearing face diapers. Maybe those are probably the same people who helped create the, the pregnant man emoji. I don't know. I'm just confused about a lot of it. It's just funny. And then so then it tied into after I was gay and all this other stuff and I'm a horrible human being and man and horrible father and a horrible husband and talking shit about my family as, as people are telling me I'm so bad, they're actually talking shit about, uh, you know, making racist comments and making comments about gay people and and t- bashing the military as they're telling me how I'm a horrible person. So go figure. Talk about hypocritical action. But anyway, you know, usually when it's human nature, when, when someone does something themselves, they blame it on the situation, on the, the other people. But when someone else does the exact same thing, not even to the extent they'll blame it on the person. It's a horrible person. So people out there are just frauds and motherfuckers. But all I do is laugh at it and say, oh, there goes some fucking human beings being human beings again. There they go again. Humans being humans. Once you're 40 years old, you're pretty much seen and heard it all. So what can really break through your skin, especially when you put yourself out there on a daily basis, if you are an entrepreneur or whatever else it is and, and you do things with the public, what if you don't have thick skin shit by the time you're 40 your skin is fucking so leathered up and calloused up that it's it just becomes comical and gives you even content so keep it on coming keep it on coming it's good stuff you're doing but in addition to all this stuff telling me i'm skinny telling me i'm on steroids after i was skinny all right uh that i'm a horrible father and they and feel bad for my children like talking about another person's children and and wife and all this other stuff as they're telling someone they're so bad that's the behavior they use to tell someone they're bad on the internet mind you on the internet then they go into the military so let's talk about the military what's up what's up freak shows everything is going freaking awesome hope things are going well with you so let's talk about the military then they go into the military and this program has nothing to do with the military it just happens that two of the instructors in there myself as a marine and one of the other instructors who was a Navy SEAL. That's the extent that this program, the project, has to do with the military. That two of us are veterans. Yes, we are veterans. So then it goes into bashing the military. And the, the, the sick part is that half of the people that were bashing the military were veterans themselves that were in the military. Saying that I shouldn't... There was someone that was actually a veteran or claimed to be a veteran. I don't know. And... Yes, of course. All, all, it's all, it's all funny. So, veterans that supposedly are veterans tell me that I shouldn't talk about being a Marine because I served before 9/11. That I shouldn't even mention being a Marine. Like I should be, I should cover it up and hide the fact that I was a Marine because I served before 9/11. They say that you're not a, you weren't, you're not really a veteran if you didn't serve during a time of war or combat. That's what it came from, other veterans. Fucking, and they're telling me I'm a horrible human being. That's just disgusting, despicable behavior of, really come from people who are just kind of 
probably miserable in their own lives. And you know what? When it came down to it, you're still my brother. You're a veteran. You're still my fucking brother. You need someone to talk to? Let's get on the phone and talk. You have questions about any video or any content they put out there? Let's get on the phone and talk about it. No problem. But how many would actually take that up, take up that offer to jump on the phone and talk about the things that they comment on and all the shit they talk on the internet? How many of them would actually do that? Saying you're not a veteran and you should be ashamed of saying you were a Marine because you served before September 11th. Think about that. Well, how fucking disgusting and despicable and disrespectful that is to literally millions and millions and millions of veterans who serve the country saying they are not true veterans. And that came from other veterans or claimed to be other veterans, even from other Marines. Then they say, then even the Marines. Now there's a certain level of banter that goes on between the military, especially within the, you know, in the Marine Corps, you have your banter and your shit talking. That's all you're having fun and whatever. And it's, it's all in good taste and, and respectful, whatever you want to call it. And there's even a banter that goes on between different branches of the military with a level of respect. But then there's those that, that say that you're not a veteran if you didn't serve during wartime. That you should not... Someone said you should never mention being in the Marines because you didn't serve during wartime. You should have just gotten out of the military, went to college, and just moved on with your life. Holy fuck, what a warped, twisted way of living. No, thank you. Sorry, I'm not a, I'm not a college person either. And I'll tell you what, my entire... Out of all my brothers and sisters, there's six of us. If you took the years of college that each of us had, you'd have to invert that list to the, probably the amount of income that each of us makes. I'm guessing it'd be a, a completely inverted number. But that's a whole different topic. We're not really getting into college right now. But that, that, someone told me that's what I should have done. Never mention the Marine Corps because I didn't serve during a war because I was served before September 11th. Then they say that now, now you're also not a Marine depending on if you if you're not a, a if you're not a grunt if you weren't in infantry you're not a marine so what percentage of the marine corps is actually infantry it's actually marines so you're not a marine and you're a fake marine if you're next it'll be that depending on what month you went through boot camp you're not a real marine because it wasn't as hot or it wasn't as cold or it wasn't as windy like these are just, literally, these are seriously, and this just goes on the internet that people message and spent their entire weekend on. It's fucking hysterical. But it, it, the amount of content that it gives to create and the amount of learning lessons and teaching lessons, like back, back in, and, and every phase of growth you have, you're going to have your fucking haters. Embrace them. Embrace them. If you're not getting them, you're not, you're not trying hard enough. If you're not getting the pathetic messages from people on the Instagrams, with hiding behind their private accounts and all this other stuff. Like 90% of these messages are for private accounts, by the way. I was called skinny by a fat person. I, I can't I can't wrap my fucking head around that one. That was hysterical. It's called skinny by a fat person. It's like when, I go, when you go to the beach. If you have an ab or a bicep, you get made fun of at the beach for being in shape. That's a sick, twisted world we're coming in. And I'm convinced it's only gotten worse because of the whole corona and the lockdowns that people just lost their fucking minds and they go onto the internet. It's like, I'm sure some of these people are still are solid dudes and they're just losing their fucking way. I'm sure they are. And I mean it 100%. Even those that talk this, this, this despicable shit, you're probably struggling. You're probably suffering in silence on something. Pick up the phone. I'll jump on the phone with you. Let's have a conversation. If nothing else, for a good laugh. Nothing else for a good laugh. Now, it doesn't go for the ones that threaten me and all this other stuff. Not for you. Not for you, suckers. Anyway, that's some despicable shit about, about the veterans, about the military. So the, the, what you need to do as you're leveling up in life and you're growing out, outgrowing your surroundings and your environment, listen, you don't like the environment and you're miserable, do something about it. Go and do something. Go level yourself up. Put yourself around other people. That's why I said find your fucking tribe. Find your like-minded freaks to be around. Find that brotherhood like we have in the fucking project. It's a powerful and it's a fucking priceless thing having that type of brotherhood. And then don't give a fuck. And, and it, there's, there's a caveat to this, but don't give a fuck what anyone thinks about you. Now I'm going to say the caveat is it's not anyone. But there's only a select group and few groups of people that I would truly give a fuck what they think, say, or do about me. A very select, small 
group. Those are the ones. Of course, in the Project Brotherhood, the MDK Brotherhood, of course, I, I care what those people think about me. When it comes to my peers and other instructors and other other people that we, we coordinate with in the project and in the Squire program, of course, I care what they think about me. My very few very close friends, my kids, my son and daughter, the Russian, my spouse, of course I give a fuck what they think, say, and do about me. But beyond that, some stranger, some fat dude on the internet making fun of me because I'm skinny? Because I'm skinny? Do you think I give a fuck? It's, it's, it's hysterical that grown, grown-ups they call me skinny. They don't like my shirt. They tell me I'm unsuccessful. I don't even know. How would, the, how would someone know how successful someone is? I'm unsuccessful. My shirt's ugly. I'm bald. No fucking shit. I'm bald. Thanks for the update, genius. Fucking brilliant. No shit, I'm fucking bald. Getting made fun of nowadays because you're skinny. Got it. Check. Holy shit. You, I, I, I taught this to my daughter when she was fucking three or four years old to laugh this shit off to laugh it off at grown ups grown ups who are telling me I'm a horrible person and not a real veteran because I was in the Marine Corps before September 11th then telling me that I'm gay I'm a bitch I'm a fag, I'm all this other stuff I'm a punk I'm skinny I'm ugly. They don't like my shirt. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. I blink my eyes too much. My eyebrows are too bushly. Look at these things. Look at those fucking things. Fuck yeah, they're bushly. Do you think any of that is going to make me not go drive to Las Vegas right now? Connect with a hundred badass, awesome motherfuckers. Or... Yesterday, while those messages were coming in, as my, as my assistant is just blocking and deleting motherfuckers left and right and sending me screenshots of the funny ones as we're all laughing about it together. And then as I'm sitting in the hot tub with my kids and then we're in the pool having a splash contest with my phone, laughing, literally laughing at the comments that come in and how fucking funny they are from grownups, serious, serious, hardcore veterans, special operations, I'm they're the real ones. And you know what? I've known special operations veterans who are struggling in life. And that's why there's military fundraisers out there. That's why there's shit. Ton of, those guys that are talking about shit, what do you actually do for the military? Now that you're out, what do you actually do? How many times have you donated to any military fundraiser or run any or run a fundraiser yourself or done anything to give back to the military other than put a title in front of your name? I've known guys who went to combat that sat there and were bored of shit and didn't have any actual combat. I know guys who never been to combat, tons of them that have never been to combat that are some awesome, badass motherfuckers. I also know what, guess what? I also know this. Tons of guys who have never even been to the military ever. They're not even veterans and they're still badass. They're still savages. They're still fucking warriors. Someone told me on one message, on one message, that I shouldn't use the word, what was it, word warrior. I shouldn't use the word warrior. I had a video, an old video from like 1988, something about like warrior boot camp workout that we were doing. How dare you use the word warrior when you weren't in the Marines after you you were, you served before 9-11. You shouldn't call any, say anything warrior. Like they, it is fucking hysterical. It is hysterical that grown men, grown fucking men, listen, that's why we created the project is for men like that. And all seriousness, this isn't just, this This is not even me being like sarcastic. Brother, if you need, I, I will tell you, brother, if you need someone to talk to, give me a call and I'll talk to you. We can talk. You're so, there, there's something going on there to have those kind of things going on in your life. That's how you spend your fucking Saturday. Let's talk about it. We'll jump on the phone. And it's not to get you into the project, but probably the project would be good for a lot of you. And then they say also the project is only for losers, for brainwashed people. If you saw some of the, some of the high caliber men 
that are in the freaking project? If you saw some of the high caliber men and successful men that are in the project that were never in the military, but guess what? There's also guys in the project that have been in the military. There's guys in the project that have been in special forces. There's guys that have graduated the project that are still on active duty. There's policemen, there's firefighters, active policemen, active firefighters, paramedics, surgeons, financial advisors, real estate moguls, tattoo artists, investors, awesome motherfucking dudes in the project, but they see a picture or a video and they say, oh, it's only for losers. <laughs> it's fucking funny. And then you know, someone will see it and jump on the bandwagon. Yeah, yeah, you tell them. Someone told me, hey, you, you're getting, your existence is getting destroyed on, on whatever, on, on Twittergram or something. What? What? The fact that someone thinks that anyone's existence is going to get destroyed because some losers are sitting in their mother's fucking basement with cheese doodle stains on their tidy whities talking shit about someone that they're skinny or that they're ugly or they don't like their shirt as a fucking grown man and you think that's it destroying someone's existence? I'll tell you what, it's the, does it look like it's destroying my existence? As I was sitting with my the beautiful Russian wife and awesome kids yesterday hanging out and playing and working out and training and wrestling and playing in the pool and sitting in the jacuzzi yesterday and today actually packing up our house ready to move into a new beautiful fucking home we just bought here in Southern California you guys really are, are crushing the existence by telling someone they're skinny and their shirt is ugly Deep stuff, deep stuff, deep stuff. So anyway, and, and, and actually on that military, I'm thinking about it. Now, I, like it starts getting your mind rolling, right? Thinking about it. My father died just a couple weeks ago. My father was in the army. Guess what? He was in the army before Vietnam. Holy shit. I think he might have even been a reservist. I have to double check. I don't know if he was in the army and then went to reserve or active duty, but he was in the army before Vietnam. He just died a couple weeks ago in upstate New York, right outside of the city. Guess what the United States Army did? They sent over some representatives. His casket was covered in an American flag and he had a military ceremony and a military burial. But wait a minute, he, didn't, he, wasn't, he, wasn't, he wasn't in Vietnam. I don't get it. Because he's a veteran, you dumb motherfuckers. Holy shit. Holy shit. Sorry if there's any comments down there. It's kind of hard to read while I'm driving. Yes, sir. Something about the project. Yeah, they would be ringing the bell, most of them. And some of them are probably good dudes. They're just, I bet, going through some shit. Like those dudes that see a, a video, those are the same dudes that, that will talk shit. They're the ones that are sitting there watching porn every fucking day, jerking off the porn. And then wonder why they have a shitty relationship with their wife. They're the ones drinking four or five times a week. Sitting watching a four-hour football game and wonder why their kids don't feel that same connection that they used to with them. And it's fucked up. And that's why we started the project. Because these are the stories I hear. I literally talk to, I don't even know, hundreds and hundreds of men every every month. Whether it's about the project or other coaching programs. Literally talk to hundreds and hundreds of men every freaking month. And the stories I hear, and a large percentage of them are highly successful men. A smaller percentage are veterans. That do need that brotherhood. That do need that camaraderie. That do need that need that support and accountability. And sometimes they do need to put in their mud, be put in their motherfucking place by an ugly, skinny, bald fucking guy with an with a with a weird t-shirt. Yes, sometimes that is needed. And if I have to be the bad guy, the one that has to do what they have to do to get the effect they're looking for, guess what? I will be that motherfucker every single day of the week. If that's what I have to do to break through to someone, to break them down, to have the breakthroughs in their family, their fitness, their finances, their faith. I will be that motherfucker. 
and that'll also be the same motherfucker that would offer to go talk on the phone to any one of those fucking guys that want to talk all the shit on the internet because you're obviously going through some shit. I would gladly hop on the phone and have a conversation with any fucking one of them. Except the tough guys that would that threaten you and this and that. That's a different story. That's a different story. But that's what the project is all about. That's why it's called a savage servant. That's what it's called. That's what the project that's why we're going to have this meetup with a hundred fucking dudes. Anyway, it's I, I can't see the messages down here as I'm going. I'm trying to catch them. But if you have any questions, comments, hey, put them in the put them in, send me a, a private message. If you're one of those ones that send the dumb messages, make them good at least. Make them funny at least. Some of them just say, you're gay, or you're dumb, or you're a shithead. Wow, very creative. That's what you did on your Saturday afternoon. You decided to send me a message tell me I'm dumb. At least get more creative than that. Give me something funny to talk about. Give me something, a, a coachable moment that I could, I, we could talk, I could, I could talk about as I'm, I'm speaking to these hundred something men in, in Las Vegas. At this, at this two, two and a half day alumni meeting we're going to. Give me some content. There's a, this makes me think of a, 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 a situation that happened in New York when I had the gyms in New York. There was a, we don't have to go into the whole story, but someone talking shit very similar. About, this is, I don't even know, five, six, seven years ago, a while ago. Talking shit on the internet. Nonsense, nonstop, the threats, all the whole same thing. The same thing as the, all the tough guys now that do it from their mom's basement with their, with their private blocked accounts. The same thing. And this, this dude was talking all kinds of shit on the internet, talking about me and my insulting my wife and my kids. Of course, he was blocked and deleted. I didn't see any of it. But people, people told me here and there. I knew about it. Of course, I just went on, you know, changing lives and you know, transforming hundreds of thousands of people's lives and helping people lose millions of pounds of weight, literally, and coaching tons of people, being a role model to my kids, hanging out with my kids. You know, you should try that sometime instead of hanging out on the fucking internet talking shit. Uh, continue to just... Try to be fucking as awesome as I could be. Continue trying to make some fucking money. Be productive, efficient with my time. And so this was going on. Someone talking to you on the internet. About four or five months kind of after that, I'm in this, I'm in the mall with my kids. I'm in the mall with my two kids. We're at this halal place we like to go to, and we're sitting there waiting for our food. We just ordered it. And I feel eyes on me from the side. Like, you know, you have that in your peripheral. You can tell that you can have the energy. You feel there's some eyes on you. There's two people standing next to me in the shadow. I thought they were just getting ready to order. And they started talking. But I thought they were just talking to the person ordering the food or whatever. I wasn't really paying attention. I'm just there with my two kids. And it turns out, talking to me, I look up. Oh, my God. It's, it's the person that was talking all this shit on the Internet. Ask me, oh, how's everything going? We're pals, I guess, now. Now we're pals. We run into each other. And, 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 and then it turns out this person is there next to their new boss who's taking them out to lunch. Their new boss and this great career opportunity that they have. Now, if I was a low-life, slimy little bitch like the, the people who go on the internet and, and Oscar Guerrero, what's up, freak? I hope you're coming to Vegas. I'll see you in a little bit. I'm about... 15 miles out? No, 30 miles out. So if I was a sle sleazy, slimy, little bitch-ass, internet shit-talking motherfucker that's got no life on a Saturday afternoon, I could have said to this gentleman, hey, what was, why were you saying all those horrible, disturbing things about my wife and my kids and insulting me and threatening me and all those videos and all this and that? I could have done all that in front of this person's, but you know what? I said, I hope everything's going well. Hope everything's going well. Hope you enjoy your food. Everything is fucking awesome. I gave a fist bump and fucking left. Because that motherfucker obviously is suffering in silence. Going through some kind of shit. What was that going to do for me? To sit and just ruin this person's new career. That maybe they turned over a new leaf. Maybe, maybe not. What was that actually going to do for me? Was that going to help me be a better role model to my kids? Was that going to make me any more money? Was that going to make me feel good about myself? No. 
it might have made that person feel good about themselves temporarily, like the losers that go and send messages to a stranger on the internet about shit they don't know what the fuck they're talking about, just flapping their gums behind their little accounts, their little Star Wars t-shirts. I could have done all that and made a big scene about it, but no. So you know what? Look, there's the kids right there. Yeah, they're growing up. Everything's fucking awesome. Hope you're doing well. Fist bump. I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. That's how shit goes. Internet fucking flapping their gums. Talking all kinds of nonsense. Usually are the most mu- most fucked up, pathetic shit going on in their lives. But I'm still here if you need to talk. I gotta get rolling. I'm getting closer to Vegas. I gotta go continue listening to some of these books. I was talking about weaponizing travel. This is about weaponizing travel right here. Creating some content. Listening to some books. Educating yourself. Having a game plan of when you're going to get your workouts in, finding out where the gym is, bringing the equipment you need with you. I have a full bag full of exercise equipment, full of all my food and protein so I can make sure I have everything I need for the entire trip out here in Vegas, no matter what. So there's no fucking excuses for eating shit, no excuse for missing a workout. And I'm going to work out like a fucking warrior, a warrior. As a Marine who served before September 11th, I'm going to work out like a fucking warrior. And guess what? I'm going to train and work out with a hundred other dudes that are project graduates that are also fucking warriors. And only about 10% of them are veterans. And guess what? The rest are still fucking warriors. Oscar Guerrero, what's up? Airport workout during the delay. Hell yes. Let the people look at you like you're weird. Let them talk shit about you. Let them make fun of you. Oscar, I got called skinny by a fat person today, just so you know, it was fucking very odd. Anyway, I'm going to check off here. I've been babbling here long enough. You get the point. The point is to weaponize your travel. Don't give a fuck about the haters. And if you're not getting haters, you're probably doing something wrong. And then in turn, even weaponize the fucking haters. Don't give a fuck what anyone thinks about you, or at least the people who don't matter, which is the large portion of people out there. Jason Hopkins, what's up, freak? Hope you're going to be in Vegas. And then find your fucking tribe. Find your tribe of like-minded freaks. Get connected to a brotherhood so you can have some support, camaraderie, accountability, and motherfucking respect. And people to sit around and laugh at all the other fucking people who don't know. If you don't know, you don't fucking know. I got to get rolling. And in case no one told you yet today... You are fucking awesome. No excuses.